Hey guys, my name is Thiago Porto and I'd like to show you the quick demo that I did here in New York for the Flame user group. I think there is cool techniques and workflows there, especially to work between teams or different others. So uh, I'm going to try to show you here uh, those, those techniques. Also, uh, thank you, I would say thank you very much for Andy and team for the great, great uh, uh, work they did for make the flame user happen it's so good to see it and there is such a good energy on that so guys thank you very much it was really fun to be there and thanks for the invite as well it's we it, it is really special so uh okay let's move on okay so first of all uh i have three quick demos it's the first one it's about the ai rotobot thing and how that works and uh, my discoverings and things so I think it's interesting just to 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 have that in flame in the first place but also how we can have quick rough rotos to play around so it's really powerful in my opinion and that's the first demo the second demo it's about a workflow that I've been working on and myself between nuke and flame uh, I'm I really like to use nuke and also flame together and the I'm using Pybox and in a different way to make that happen. So on that workflow it's really good because it seems seamless. It seems just one single software so we don't I don't need to it's like a flame environment uh, but with different tools and different buttons. So for me it looks just one single thing because of that. So that that's what makes Pybox powerful and that's I want to try to show you guys the third one it's a uh, it's a little bit more complex but also really cool which is about uh, the new plugin for Nuke called Eddy uh, Eddy is really powerful plugin to do particles and simulations on GPU uh, especially if you if you have RTX cards uh, for NVIDIA and it's really really powerful plugin uh, and what I built for me, it was a, a workflow using Pybox so I can continue working in Flame. I can render and batch, I can change lights and batch, and uh, I can do stuff, continue doing stuff. So let's say if uh, I'm working something, someone was working Eddy and make some simulations that's being approved, then but now I'm working different background or different matte painting or the clients change the grades, whatever, we can and still in flame quickly change the light and the look of the render of those particles and make that uh, inside batch. So I don't need even go uh, out of flame to play around. So that I think it's really also a really powerful workflow and that's, uh, that's I want to try to show you guys. So let's move to batch, and here I have one shot, and here it's uh, another shot that I have, uh, and it's the shot I'm going to start with. Uh, this is, you know, it's a simple, straightforward shot, nothing special. But uh, uh, what I want to have here is the AI Rotobot and how he can, it can, roto and at least have some mats from those persons so that's let's try that uh, first of all uh, uh, I already have like a setup here and also going to use uh, what I'm going to use here it's a for this quick demo it's a, a dev mat from, uh, from Autodesk as well and a second text and a uh, rotobot text so first of all let's start with the rotobot before I go there, I want to like show you just like how that plugin actually works. Uh, from what I understand, uh, I'm not a technical guy, but for what I understand, it kind of use uh, the TensorFlow Google's uh, Google's technology to make that. And this is what's happening. He's trying to figure out what is a person, and he create like kind of a layer, like a square layer, or whatever, and then he tried to recreate what movements for the person are inside of those squared and, and layers so uh, there's tons of articles you can read about it but essentially this is what it's trying to do it's trying to recognize 
the movement inside of what it calls a person. Uh, here's another example of what he's trying to do. So it's you can still see it creates. Uh, it's trying to read out the same movement over and over again, and because it understands the move of a person. Uh, here it can also see again that it's a. Uh, it's actually looking for the models which uh, for us is just a button like persons sky or uh, elements and it, it tries to get those back to us in a red green or blue channel so uh, i'm not going there because i'm not a technical but essentially that is the idea behind this plugin it's using google's tensorflow for that uh, moving on uh, this is a open fx plugin so uh, after you install we're gonna have like the open fx node enabled in flame so you can read those plugins and here we can load the plugin which is rotobot and that is difference between different results for myself i think segmentation the second one is better i've been playing with those and i always keep better results than the second one for me so that's essentially what I want to show you guys is the one that works the best better. Uh, the interface that is uh, that's very simple. Uh, so you have like red channel, you have green channel and blue channel. Uh, in each channel, you can ask like what the plugin is gonna look for on the shot. So let's say if I want a person, if I want a buzz or whatever. So here, <coughs> sorry, uh, here I just want uh, the persons on the shot. So has hit person and uh, here is like in the way it's looking for in my testing have that enable it's better so now as you can see it's real time thing I'm not editing this video so so here it is on the right channel we have what the plugin thinks it's person so on the shot so it's good you can also have second layers in, in the green channel or more layers in the blue channel so if you want different uh, layers that you need for Roto, then you can separate later. So now what I'm going to do is just uh, uh, have a, uh, the red channel has an alpha, blur a little bit and color correct the plate. Just so you can have a rough idea of what's going on. So this is the result. <coughs> As you can see here, it's great a pretty good rough match in my opinion especially this think about it, this is the first version of that plugin and the first uh, time that you get something like that so this is the result and play just so you guys see it uh, you can see that it can have pretty good shapes on it which is insane in my opinion you can have all the heads and uh, all the legs even if you you try to build this quickly with keying and stuff, it'll be time consuming because the background has different colors and shapes. So here it is. Uh, you see still how good it is, I think. Uh, so the second node that I'm going to show you, uh, AI node 2, it's a death mat from Autodesk. It's a really, really good one to it's try to generate death uh, from the shot. And that's it. The, it's rendered right now, so it's live. Uh, so you can see it, that's pretty fast, crazy fast. And you can still have it, uh, you already have it, all the death mat, which is insanely good. There's some flickering stuff, of course, but you can still color correct a little bit and have more, you know, depends on the shot that you need. You can play around with that and have more depth or not, or just the background. So, in. So, let's scroll a little bit. You can see that it's keep consistent through the shot, which I think is really cool. So let's try to do something here. Uh, it's just a good example of how you can combine both AI tools together. So you see it's the same thing. So I'm to, uh, color correcting a little bit. And I also have the shapes from, <coughs> sorry guys. I also have the shape from the 
the other plugin AI that's wrote all the persons. And here I'm trying to create a DAF so I can play on the background. Uh, so let's say let's say if I need repositioning the shot, like if uh, maybe clients ask for or whatever, so we need to go do tight in on both actors. So usually what we do is just to do transform axis, but it's uh, the real thing is, if it was like a true lenses, we should be moving the defocus a little bit in the background. So just like, let's say I, want, I have a tight shot, so it would be nice to have like a, saying a better depth blur on the background so I can easily actually fake it, uh, the real lenses, if that was real. Uh, so instead of just repositioning in scale. Well, so what I did was like I did the same thing for the for the ZDEF uh, and I pipe both together and out of the action and here I'm using the matchbox lens blur and you can see quickly that I'm already blurring the background and just the Z and the Z space. We can also pick, like, if I want to pick, like, oh, okay, I want to blur the front, uh, I want to blur in the back. So I think this is really cool even to just play around and see how far you can go. Uh, also, you can tweak better the ZDEF if you want to, like, color correct better the ZDEF or even some extra G masks. But this, this is just like quickly show how powerful these AI tools can be in the future, it, they already are actually, so you can imagine in five years from now what we can get. Uh, yeah, that's it. it, let me play that render a little bit so you can see that uh, it's working already, so maybe some tweaks and edges, but still it's a good five minute test. So that's it guys for the first AI uh, demo that I did uh, on the user group. But uh, before you move on, there is a second shot that I want to show you. This shot over here, uh, this is a Alexa footage. This is more challenging and I was trying to get like how far I can push the plugin, the AI plugin, and how far it breaks. So what I did here is, as you can see in the shot, there is it's there is a lens that is a front element uh, that it needs to be subtract and also the the background the lights is different every, in every place so we have highlights so we have blacks levels so it's not just like a single key solution to have a depth from from the uh, from the actors. Uh, so it's a challenge shot, and so I did the same thing on the red channel. I asked for a person, and this is what the plugins gave me. There is no pre cache here. It's really this is the render, the live render. Uh, again, it's going to Rec 7 and 9, and uh, it's analyzing that. And what I did again, a uh, matte for that, and a blur a little bit, and a color correct. So you can see quickly that it's it has really good plantation. You can see that we get mats, and of course sometimes it breaks, and uh, we have bad areas, and we go to sofa. But uh, uh, this was just me playing around a little bit and see how far. I can play and push the limits of the plugin. So, like here, when the the lens changing, you can see that it's still trying to get a person out. So this is really cool. Uh, second test that I did was the same thing, and uh, I'm using the ZDEF from Autodesk, the AI ZDEF pass, which I'm generating here. Uh, as you can see, uh, it's. Uh, it starts to get a pretty good ZDEF pass actually. If you color correct it, you can already see that all details are there.
So, and here, of course, you have to animate sometimes because it gets different. Especially this shot is very challenging shot for AI. So, but if you color correct, animate those, you can see that the details are there and they keep consistency. So this is really cool. So what I'm going to do is have like, I'm trying to display using the ZDAFs just to see how far I can go. So you can see here, if I this camera display, so we're gonna do a projection here. So let, let's use a second camera to project. So camera displays with this second lenses. Let's go to GPU because it's faster. Uh, and you can see here that nothing has changed, but if I see this place, you can start to have like the same value. And it's really fun technique to use it because we don't need to even generate anything by hand like G masks and stuff. It's really, it's really uh, rendering all live. So it's really cool to see something like that really fast. like five minutes was needed so let's say now we need play around you can really see how far we can go so this is really cool and it's really 3d space let's say here if you need to you know maybe do some z camera you can see that it's really he is not flat, you can still see feeling a little bit of depth on the shots if that was a still. So this is really cool. You can really rotate a little bit and play around and get more, but you see all those edges, but it's still fun. So that's uh, that was this was that was a demo for the AI tools. Uh, the Rotobot 2 and the ZDAF 2 from Autodesk, which I think is really powerful in this day, so I can even imagine how great that's gonna be for the future. Uh, so that's it, let's move on to the second one. Uh